ऐशिपुत्रम अत्रूपाग्रजापुरी माचुरी गोस्तुआति हरहाकुंद गिरीवर अहोराधिका वस प्रतूस प्रतीत कृपया श्री गुरु तम न तो गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाए तदाले कृष्णा कृष्णा वक्ताय तद्वक्ताय नमो नम आनंदलीलमाय विग्रहाय हेम बद्यव्यचावि सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदाय चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते शिखंड शिखर स्मरहा सुमुरली मनोरा राधिकर सिखो मम कृपा निधे सपीर चरण किंग कुरिम कुरु तवैवस्मी तवैवस्मी ना जीवामी तया बिना इति विज्ञाय देवी तम नमः First of all, I offer my sustained dandavat puspanjali, my heart like flowers, thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master. My supremely worshipful spiritual guru, Dave. अस्मदीय परमराजम गुरुपाद पद्म नित्यलीला प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णुपाद अष्टोतर सत शिशिमाद रूपानुगाचार्य वर्य शिल भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज शिल गुरुदेव की आई ऑफ माई प्रणाम थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टाइम्स एट द लोट स्वीट ऑफ माई परम गुरुदेव टू शिल प्रभुपाद एंड ऑल अब आवर श्री रूपानुग गौरिय गुरु परंपरा And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Vancha kalpataru vesha, kripa sindhu vesha, bodhita nam pavani bhu, Vaishnavi bhu namo namaha. So. We have just been singing a very beautiful song that was manifest by Saptam Goswami Satyananda Shila Bhakti No Thakur. Hari Nama Tuwa Aneka Surupa. 
This is one of uh, eight songs that he's composed, explaining, expounding upon okay. the Sri Nam Astakam of Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami has written eight verses glorifying the holy name, and Srila Bhakti Thakur has written one whole song explaining each one of those verses. So this song is the explanation of the fifth verse of that Nam Astakam, Agadamana Yeshoda Nandano Nandasuno Kamala Nayana Gopichandra Vrindavan Indra Prantakarun Krishna Vitaneka Surupe Tvai Mamarate Utcha Vadatam Namadeya Yuga Dharma Pravatayamu Nama Sankirta Chari Bhava Bhakti Diya Nacha Mupubhan Krishna decided, I will appear in the age of Kali, in the mood of a devotee, and I will spread Harinam Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names, the Yuga Dharma everywhere. And through the medium of this Yuga Dharma, I will make the whole world and all the three worlds dance, relishing Chari Bhav Bhakti Diya Nachamo Bhuvan. Relishing four moods. That is the Dasya Sakya Vatsali and Madhurya of Braja. Four types of Braja Prem Mahaprabhu is distributing through the holy name. Edwari Achandale Kirtana Sanchare. Nama Prema Malaganti Paraila Sangsare. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took the holy names, Hare Krishna and Rama, like flowers, and he put them onto the thread of Prem. Hmm? He made a Nama Prema Mala, and that garland he offered to the whole universe. Kali Doshani Derajan Hyaste Heka Mahad Guna Kirtanad Eva Sangasya Mukta Sangha Param Brajat In Srimad Bhagavatam he said this age of Kali is an ocean of faults There are many problems in this age of Kali Have you experienced any problems in your life? Hmm? Any? Some problems? Yes, because Kali Doshani Derajan This this age of Kali is like an ocean of faults. Hmm? And everyone is swimming in that ocean of faults. Nothing but faults and faults. He has the Eko Mahadguna. But this age of Kali has one good quality. Kirtanadi Eva Krishna Sya. Just by performing Kirtan of the holy names, Mukta Sangha Parambarjat. One meaning is you become free from the influence of the gunas, mukta sangha, become free from attachment to this world, param barajat. And param barajat, you go to the transcendental world. And another meaning is mukta sangha, by chanting the holy names, you will, by the power of the holy name, get the opportunity for mukta sangha, the association of liberated devotees. And by hearing their Harikata and Kirtan, or the heart will become infused with Brajaras and Param Brajet, you will go to Transcendental Braj. So, this is the greatest quality of this Kali Yuga. Harinam Sankirtan, not ordinary Harinam Sankirtan, but rather Sri Chaitanya Makud Girna, Hari Krishna Tivana Kaha. The syllables Ha, Re, Krishna have from deep in the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exploded from his lips like a volcano of love. Madhyanto Jagat Premi Vijayantam Tadavayaha And because the syllables of the Maha Mantra have been uttered by Krishna himself who is sinking in the Mahabhava of Shimati Radhika so those syllables have been infused hmm, with the most intense and confidential Braja Prem. And those Nam Akshara 
syllables of Nam are coming down from Mahaprabhu hmm, through Sila Rupa Goswami Pad hmm, and through her to our Gurudev and in this way to us. Hmm. So those who have received Harinam from bona fide Guru in the line of Sila Rupa Goswami, you are very, very, very fortunate. Never neglect your Harinam. Hmm? Don't leave your Japamala starving, hanging on the wall every day. Take shelter of Nam Prabhu. Even if you have no taste, do it anyway. Kintad radhanu dinam kalusai vajusta sadvi kramat bhavati tad gadumula antri. If one will simply utter the name of Krishna with honor, with respect, gradually, gradually, Nam Prabhu will destroy all avidya, all ignorance, and a taste for chanting will arise. This is the wonderful nature of Nam. In the Rig Veda, it is said, Om Asya Jananto. Nama Chit Viviktan Mahaste Vishnu Sumatim Bajamahe Om Tatsat. The Rishis are praying, Oh my Lord, we don't know you, but how wonderful it is, simply by doing the Aksha Abhyas, the repetition of the syllables of your name, we will attain full realization. Why? Because Om Tatsat, Om means the holy name. Tat is that supreme absolute truth, and Sat means the Swayam Prakash, Swatta Siddha, self-manifesting. Hmm? The realization of Krishna that comes from the chanting of the holy names is not dependent on your uh, scholarship, your learning, your education, your speculation, or any material quality. It is completely beyond the mind and intelligence. Because Nam has Vastu Shakti, his own power. If you touch fire, fire burns. So if you touch this Nam, that means chant without offense, without committing offenses to Nam, then the effect of Nam will manifest in the form of feeling of separation. Ha Krishna, Krishna, where are you? And destroy material existence and give a glimpse of the spiritual world. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He empowered Srila Rupa Goswami. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Hayam Tadati Swapadantikam <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered Rupa Goswami to manifest his desires, his mission in this world. So being mm, completely overflowing with the powerful mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Rupa Goswami has Describe the glories of the Holy Name in His Sri Namastakam. First He prays. Huh? Do you know, who knows Namastakam? First verse. Mm. No, one. no one. This is not a good sign. <laughs> Try to. If you want to chant the holy names purely, and if one has committed some offenses to the name, how can you become free from those offenses? Hmm? One way is, you know, if you offend someone, you can apologize to them and speak very sweet words to them. So you can apologize to Nam Prabhu and speak these sweet words that were spoken by Rupa Goswami glorifying Nam, Nam Prabhu. We say Nam Prabhu. Prabhu means our Master, our Lord. Nam is person, Krishna Himself. So we have to pray to Nam Prabhu. And the best prayer, if we'll say the prayer of Rupa Goswami, then Nam Prabhu will, because Nam Prabhu loves Rupa Goswami. Can you imagine how, how much Nam Prabhu loves Rupa Goswami? So if you utter Sila Rupa Goswami's prayer, then Nam Prabhu will become very, very favorably disposed towards you. So in the first verse, it's in your songbook actually. Namaste, come you can see. Yep. Yeah. It's in all your songbooks also. It's, if you have a songbook, you can look and then you'll be able to more easily follow the class today also. The first line is Nikola Surti Nikola. So if you look it up in the front, it's Sri Nam, Krishna Namaste. If you look it up in the back, it's under Nikola. 326. So Sila Rupa Goswami is praying. Nikila Sruti Moli Ratnamala 
ज्यूति निराजी तथा वंकज ऐ मुक्त कौल उपस्यम पटस्थम हरिनाम संस्मयामी ओ नाम प्रभु नॉट आश्रयामी संस्मयामी आई एम टेकिंग कंप्लीटली 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 आई एम टेकिंग शेल्टर ऑफ यू आई एम ड्राउनिंग इन दिस ओशन ऑफ कली युग एंड आई सी नो अदर मीन्स ऑफ escape from this situation i see no other friend in the whole world but you naam prabhu patastham hari naam sangsa i am taking shelter of you who are you nikala surti mole ratnamali juti nirajita papanka janta oh naam prabhu you are such a wonderful person that the mm, mantras of the upanishads which are the crest jewels of the vedas personified they are mm, offering arti mm, the, these mantras of the vedas are like jewels which are full of the effulgence of transcendental knowledge but you have to know that the effulgence of transcendental knowledge emanating from the jewels of the vedic mantras with that light mm, the tips of the toes of harinama being worshiped in arti Hmm? the tips of the toes of harina so what does that mean if the light of knowledge emanating from the mantras of the vedas is being used to do puja of the tips of the toes of harina then that means as mahapu said vidyavadhu jivana harina is the life and soul of all transcendental knowledge the, the knowledge transcendental knowledge which is there in harina is far 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 superior than any knowledge which is coming from the mantras of the upanishads here it is said that the light of those jewels of the vedas are worshiping the tips of the toes of naam prabhu that means that naam has toes very important <laughs> don't forget that when you chant hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari this naam has ten toes Hmm? because nam is krishna swarup krishna himself prajanda nandan shama sundar with very soft delicate lotus feet always running and playing in the soft dust on the bank of jamuna those are the toes of hari nam hmm? so ai mukta kula upasyamanam parita on all sides nam prabhu is being worshiped by mukta kula that means by dynasties of great liberated souls hmm? some persons like the those who are impersonalists they do kirtan but the the point of their kirtan is to get mukti be liberated and then they won't do kirtan anymore they'll just be silent hmm? once i made one program and so many persons came from, some followers of some mm, impersonalist guru and we were doing kirtan everyone was dancing and when the kirtan got louder and louder and faster and faster then one by one they all sat down and in complete silence and i was looking around hey get up come on don't <laughs> this this is not the goal of chanting hmm? to become silent hmm? the, you know what is the goal of chanting shila prabhat said the goal of chanting is more chanting, more chanting. Hmm? साधो सदन तत्व जय के चूस काल हरि नाम संकीर्तन मिलवे सो काल चैतन्य महाप्रभु said all the truths of which are related to sadhana practice and also related to sadhya the ultimate goal of life prem everything has been mixed into the chanting of the holy names so those who are beginning spiritual life they chant hare krishna and those who are advancing in spiritual life they chant hare krishna and those who are perfect they chant hare krishna and when you go to the spiritual world and you are with the gopis in vrindavan you will chant hare krishna and when krishna leaves vrindavan and goes to mathura radharani is crying hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare in separation radhika herself and when krishna himself cannot understand the prem of radhika 
then he comes in this world with the complexion and sentiments of Radhika. And what does he do? He chants, Hey Krishna, Hey Krishna, 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 Hey Hey. Hey Ram, Hey Ram, 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 Hey Hey. So everyone, everyone from the bottom to the top, the top of the top, Ayi Mukta Kula Upasamanam Parthastam Harinam Sangsrayami. All the great, liberated, not only liberated, Niti Mukta, eternally liberated, eternally perfect persons, they're chanting this now. Mm -hmm. Like Shukadev Goswami has said, Nivrita Tasha Rupagiya Manad, Bavosa Dachrota Manori Biramat, Ka Uttama Shloka Gunana Navadat, Pumam Virajeta Bina Pashuknat. Hmm. Prakshit Maharaj is glorifying the chanting of the holy names. He said, Nivritta Tarsha Rupagiyamana. Those who are Nivritta Tarsha, they are completely free from any worldly thirst. Hmm? This is the nature of a person who has avidya. They are thirsty, they want comfort, pleasure enjoyment in this material world and their mind is dwelling on that but a person whose heart is completely vishuddha completely clean completely pure they have no thirst at all for this world hmm? they have some thirst but not for this world hmm? they have the premamoyi trishna rag rag means premamoyi trishna unquenchable thirst to love and serve radha and krishna hmm? So, Nivritta Tasha Upagiyamana, those who are free from the material thirst, they always engage in hearing and chanting the holy names, speaking Harikata, which is Bhavotsajat Sotamano Biramat. It's like a medicine which cures the disease of this material existence and gives great pleasure to the ear and to the heart. So, what person would not? Dedicate his life to hearing, chanting and remembering about Sri Krishna. Who will not do it? Only Pashugnat. Pashugna. Pashugna means one who kills animals, a hunter. Hunters are very cruel. They go out and they kill animals. But Pashugna, Pashu can also mean Pran. So Pashugna means one who commits suicide. If you are not passing your time hearing and chanting and remembering about Sri Krishna, Every day, you are committing suicide, people. Is it correct, Tarun? Yes. Yes. Confirmed from our most senior Vaishnava present today. Mm. So don't commit suicide knowingly. Every day, continuously, as much as you can. Or don't waste your time. Don't worry about your worldly things. My Gurudev used to say, just try. For two weeks, just cancel everything, just chant all day. Mm -hmm. You'll see, Krishna will manage everything in your life. Hmm? Otherwise, what will you do? Hmm? So, also, Sh Rupa Goswami, when he wrote this verse, he was remembering that Shukadev Goswami has said, Eitan nirvidyamananam Ichatam makutho bhayam Yoginam arpanenitam Harinam anukirtanam in the beginning of the second canto, that's the first time that Shukadev Goswami is speaking. Because Pariksh Maharaj asked him, if a person is about to die right now, what should he do? Shukadev Goswami Padi, he said that Eitan Nirvidyamananam, yeah, Nirvidyamananam means Nirvidyataisha, like in that other verse, person who has no material desires. Hmm? Or if a person has many desires, whether you have no desires or whether you have many desires, the infallible and fearless way of progress in life, even if you are yoginam, he yogi means not a ashtanga yogi, he yogi means one who in their spiritual form is have, who has yoga that is meeting with Sri Krishna in his spiritual form perfectly devotees. So whether you are mm, free from all worldly desire, whether you have all worldly desire, or you're already perfect and meeting with Krishna, then the best thing to do is Harinam Anuse Sankirtanam. Continuous chanting of the Holy Name. So Nikila Suti Mauli Ratnamala Juti Nirajita Tavabanka Janta Ayi Muktikula Upasbanam Paritastam Harinama Sankshani Now in the second verse, 
Shila Rupa Goswami Padi is saying Jaya Nama Deya Muni Brindagaya Jana Ranjana Panamaksara Kite Tomanadra Api Managadiri Tamnikilo Grata Papa Talimbilumpasi Jai Nama Deya Oh Oh glory is to the holy name Muni Brindagaya You are sung by all the great munis like Sh Narad Muni, Shuka Muni, Vyasa Muni, and especially the greatest munis. They are Swarup Damodar Goswami, Roy Ramananda, Rupa Goswami himself, Raghunath Das Goswami, our Guru Parampara, all sing the glory of the Holy Name. Janaranjanaya Paramaksharakate. Janaranjanaya means for the purpose of giving happiness, giving pleasure to your dear ones. You have, O oh Krishna, you have appeared Paramakshara Akrite in the form of a Paramakshara. Aksha means syllables. Don't think that the syllables of the name Hare Krishna is one thing, but the real mantra, the real holy name is something else inside that. Don't think like that. The syllables themselves are the holy name. They are the Paramakshara. It may be that a person who is conditioned and offensive when he is saying Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, he is making material syllables. But that doesn't mean, hmm, that's called Namakshara Bahirai, the only external sound, Vaikhari. Hmm? It can be true, it's true. But that doesn't mean that the transcendental name is something, some hidden core which is inside those syllables. Don't think like that. I've met many devotees who think, oh, this sound, external sound of the name, this is just external. But the real mantra is something different, something inside. No. There is the material syllables chanted by a person who is committing offenses. And there is the Rupa Goswami saying, Paramakshara Akrite. Paramakshara, transcendental syllables, which are directly see Krishna himself, that come and dance on the tongue of the pure devotees and reveal all Krishna's form, qualities, associates, eternal service and pastimes. Hmm? Tamanadara apimanagadiri tamni kilograt apa patalim vilumpasi. Rupa Goswami is saying that if a person, oh, just will chant just a little, just once, your holy name, Tamanadara, even without uh, respect, hmm? then that Nama Bas, that is the semblance of the name, the light, not actually the pure name, but the light coming from the name, will destroy all of that person's mountains and mountains of sins at once so the meaning here is as the it is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam 6th canto the Yamadutas they said Sanketyam Parihasamba Stobam Helanam Evava Vaikunta Nama Gahanam Asheshagam Haram Vidu that if a person will chant the name of the Lord to indicate something else just like in India, every shop is named after some form of the Supreme Lord. Mm, you know? Vishnu's bicycle repair shop. Mm? Narayan's pan store. Bidi store. Like, so, everyone is saying their holy names all the time. Not to indicate God, but to indicate something else. So, even this Sanket, if a person has not a history of offense, then this Sanket, this Nama Bas, it will destroy all sins in a moment. Sanket Tam Parihasamba. If someone chants the holy name just joking. Hmm? Stobam, Stobam means for, for musical entertainment or to mark time in, in, in a song. You know, sometimes there's a space in the rhythm of a song. Srita Kamala Kucha Mandala and then there's a space, so you can insert all in there. Hari Sita Kamala Kucha Mandala Dutta Kundala Dutta Kundala Kale Tala Vita Banamala Jaya Jaya Devari There's another space coming, let's put some more names in. Hare Hare Jaya Jaya Devari So sometimes singers in the spaces in songs they put some holy names. It, this also destroys. Namabhas destroys all things. Sanketam parihasam vah stobam helanam 
Helena means neglectfully. One is not paying attention, just somehow or other he's saying the name. So, it means, it means that Nam has Vastu Shakti. So Vastu Shakti, it is defined, Vastu Shakti Na Budhir Apekshate. That the power of which does not depend on your intelligence eh, is called Vastu Shakti. Hmm? As we gave the example of fire, the burning power of fire doesn't depend on your intelligence, understanding. A child who doesn't know anything will be burnt also. So because Nam has his own Shakti that does not depend on your intelligence, just touching that name somehow or other, if one is uh, not offensive, then it will destroy his sins. Udiritam, here. Jai Namadeya Muni Brindage, Jana Ranjana Pramakshrakate, Apina Managudiritam, Nikilogra, Tapa, Patalimilum Pussy. Great mountain of sins will be destroyed. That means all the way up to the complete destruction of the Ling Sharir. That means the subtle body. You have a subtle body composed of manas, buddhi, ahankar and chitta. Mind, intelligence, ego and the chitta, conditioned consciousness. So these four things compose the subtle body. And only nama, touch of nama bas can, hmm, Srila Bhakti Nautakur explains in his explanation of this verse, hmm, linga banga hoi anayase. Your subtle body becomes completely destroyed very easily. Hmm? And so when the physical body is still here, but actually it's the subtle body which is the cause of bondage to this world. Not the gross body. That you have a physical body in this world, this is not the cause of bondage. Cause of bondage is mana eva hi bandhanam. The mind is the cause of all bondage. So when that subtle body is dissolved by the light emanating from Nam Prabhu, ah, then one is uh, liberated. So, then, see, Rupa Goswami in the next verse is saying, Yadabhasa pyudvant kabalita bhavadvant bibhadbo drasham tatvanda nammapi dishati bhakti pranayinim janasthasyoda tam tarani bhagavatna jagati bhagavatna matarane kriti te nirvakta kaya mahimanam prabhavati Rupa Swami is asking, O oh, Nam Prabhu, what learned scholar can recite your glories? The meaning is this, that even if a person is extremely well educated and has studied the Vedas meticulously, but still they cannot know the profound glories of the Holy Name. Because the glories of the Holy Name are achincha, inconceivable. They are dark atit. They are beyond all powers of logic, reason, and discrimination. Hmm? So, yadabhaso pyutat kabalita pavadanta vipavo. It means that when a person is chanting, trying to chant the holy name, and they give up the ten offenses, before the pure name, which is like the sun rises, first the rays of the name begin to appear in that devotee's heart. You know, just... Like before the sun raises, rises in the morning, the sky becomes full of light. So in the same way, before should the Naam, the pure name appears, some light from that pure name comes in the heart and or destroys all ignorance and begins to give a vision. Gives a vision of the form of Krishna, qualities of Krishna. Like this. It gives a vision of how the associates of Krishna are serving him. And then you realize, oh, that's Shuddha Bhakti. Really? Until you begin to realize how Yashoda Maya is serving Krishna. How Lalit and Vishaka are serving Krishna. Until you begin to realize it's by the mercy of the Holy Name. Then you cannot understand really what it means. Spontaneous, natural, uh, loving thirst for see Krishna. And then when we see that, then our heart begins to tremble. Some rays of the love of those bridge buses, uh, the moon-like rays of their love, 
illuminates the crystal of our heart and we become full of joy. And when that joy we feel is impelling us to engage in bhakti, then that's called Raganuga Bhakti. The sadhan, the stage of practice which is impelled, inspired by uh, the joy of following in the wake of their ecstatic sentiments. Hmm? If we want to become free from the Nam Aparaga and experience this, then we should glorify Nam, but there's something else we'll have to do. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Prabhu kahe Vaishnav seva Naam sankirtan Dui karo shigra pabe Sri Krishna charan If you want to attain the lotus feet of Krishna very quickly just two things Naam sankirtan and Vaishnav seva they go together then it will be successful without that is not possible just like we have our Kaviraj here Ayurvedic Kaviraj, he knows everything about medicine. If you're sick, you can see him. In Ayurvedic medicine, you have to give a medicine. But along with that medicine, sometimes there's something generally called uh, the Anupan. Anupan means that for the medicine to be successful, it has to be taken along with something else. Hmm? So for example, the doctor may give you some tablets. But he'll say, take these tablets twice a day with warm milk. Hmm? So the milk is the anupan. If you don't take it with the anupan, which will be the um, the um, carrier for the medicine, then the medicine will not be effective. So in the same way, hmm? though Harinam, hmm? Mahapu said, I have bought the medicine to destroy this worldly existence. So Harinam is a medicine. But unless you do the anupan, you take it with Anupan, it will not work. What is that? Vaishnav Seva. Serving pure devotees. Very, very important. Chadiya Vaishnava Seva Nisteya Payachi Keva. Sri Narthan Das Thakur asked this rhetorical question. Was anyone ever liberated from this world who gave up serving Vaishnavas? Did it happen? No. Never, never happened. Never happened. Why? Why is this the Anupan? Because if we are not experiencing the nectar of Nam Prabhu, we should know for sure it's because of Nam Aparad. Hmm? But if we serve a pure Vaishnava who is very dear to Nam Prabhu, hmm? then Nam Prabhu, oh, you are serving my dear, dear Vaishnava. Okay, let's just get the record of your offenses and throw it in the ocean. We'll cancel that. We'll forget about that. Hmm? And Nam Prabhu gives it the nectar of his lotus feet to us by Vaishnava Seva. We see this in the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Perhaps you know that Mahaprabhu, after taking sannyas, he went to Puri and he was there a short time and he set off to look for his brother Vishwarup, who had taken sannyas some, quite some years before when he was, Nimai was a little boy. So Mapu was traveling in South India and he was searching, uh, where, where can I find my brother? Gradually, gradually, he came to a place called the Pandarpur. Hmm? Do you know Pandarpur? Hmm? So in Pandarpur, there's a famous temple there of a Vital. Hmm? Vital, yeah. yeah. So he came to Pandarpur. And when he was there, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came into the temple of Vital. I don't know if you've ever seen Vital, he's very famous. He's, he's standing on a, on a block of stone like this. <laughs> huh? So Mahaprabhu came and he gave pranam and he was dancing. In, Vital means Krishna. It, it means like Mbala Gopal. Bo, boy, young boy Krishna. Hmm? Lalila. So... Mahaprabhu saw Krishna and he was in great ecstasy and he was dancing. So one Brahmin was there and he saw Mahaprabhu and he, oh, he thought, let me invite the sannyasi to stay in my home and feed him. So Mahaprabhu came to the house of, of that Brahmin and that Brahmin happily cooked and offered the bhog to Krishna and gave prasadam to Mahaprabhu. And they were talking and talking and the, that Brahmin told him, 
Oh, you know, there's another sannyasi staying in our village. And his name is? Mm. Rangapuri. Rangapuri. Yes. Rangapuri. So, have you read Chaitanya Charamita? People, don't forget also, chant every day and read every day. Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charamita. Don't lose your life. Slowly, slowly, your hairs are growing grey and wrinkles are coming and you cannot jump up and down so much anymore. Slowly, slowly. Hmm? Yamaraj is coming. Hmm? He's standing behind you waiting to grab you. Hmm? And Shastridi said, you should practice spiritual life in such a way thinking that Yamaraj has already caught you by the hair. Hmm? Yes, yes. Don't lose your time. So, hmm, Rangapuri, he, that, that Brahmin said, Rangapuri is staying in our village in the house of another Brahmin. So Rangapuri is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri and the god brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own guru, Srila Ishwara Puri Pad. So then Mahaprabhu became very happy. I, tell me where to go, I want to go there. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to that place and when he saw Rangapuri, he fell on the ground giving pranam. And just giving pranam to Rangapuri, Mahaprabhu, his hairs were standing on end, his body was trembling, tears were flowing from his eyes. And Rangapuri said, Oh, Sripad, Your Holiness, get up, get up. And Rangapuri said to Mahaprabhu, Oh, you must have some sambandha, some relationship with Madhavendra Puri. Otherwise, it's not possible to have such symptoms of ecstatic love. Huh? Why? Bhaktya sanjatiya bhaktya bibrat utpalakam tanum Bhakti comes from bhakti. How do we get bhakti? From a person who has bhakti. Only because Ishwara Puri, he was serving Madhavendra Puri. When Madhavendra Puri was old and lying in his bed and could not move, he could not go to the bathroom. He was passing stool and urine in the bed. And Sila Ishwara Puri's very beloved, dear disciple, was uh, changing the bedclothes and bathing him and taking care of him with so much love. And because of this, the great ocean of Prem in the heart of Madhavendra Puri. Ai Dina Dayadar Natahe Matura Nata Kadava Lokshase Hridam Tamaloka Kataram Dayata Brahmati Kim Karom Maham. Just as Radhika would become mad in separation from Krishna when Krishna was in Mathura. So Madhavendra Puri was realizing this and weeping. Oh, Krishna, you whose heart is so soft and always melting. You were always kind to those who are suffering in Vrindavan. Whenever any suffering came, immediately you came and saved us all. But now we are suffering. Why are you not coming? Because Ai Dina Dayadanata Radharani realized Mathura Nath. Now you are not Brajanath, hmm? the Lord of Braja. You've become Mathura. Now you've gone to Mathura. Mathura is a strange place. Such a strange place that it has a mystical influence on a person. If someone will go to Mathura, then they forget all about their previous relationships. Hmm. So that must be why now you've become Mathuranath and gone to Mathura and completely forgotten about us. Kadava Loksa say. Now you are associating with those Katriyas. Katriyas are not soft like Gopals. The warrior caste. Kat. Kat means cut. Who gives pain to others. They are very harsh and cruel. And now by associating with them, you are not Dayadranat. You are not with a melting heart. You have a very hard heart. And you have forgotten us. Hmm? Oh Krishna, without seeing you, my heart is trembling. Oh my darling, what will I do now? Madhavendra Puri was going mad in praying for Krishna. And because Srila Ishwara Puri Pad was serving his lotus feet, then the whole treasure of the heart of Madhavendra Puri came in the heart of Srila Ishwara Puri. And his other disciples like Rangapuri. And now that had come to the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And only those who were connected 
in that line of Madhavendra Puri. They had such ecstatic love, otherwise not just mm, Ranga Puri said, I know that without a relationship with Madhavendra Puri, there's no smell, there's no scent at all of such a prem anywhere in the universe. Hmm? And Ranga Puri lifted up Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and embraced him. And they, they were thrilled with ecstasy, embracing each other overwhelmed and all pastimes of Radha Krishna and Vrindavan were appearing in their hearts. Mahapur said to the Rangapuri, yes, I have relation with Madhavendra Puri. Your God brother Shila is my Gurudev. So you are also like my Gurudev also. Hmm? So then they were very happy to be together and for five or six days they were just speaking Harikata together. And in the course of their discussion, in the course of their discussion, Rangapuri, he, he said, Oh, where are you from? Mahapur said, I'm from Navadweep. Rangapuri said, Oh, I visited Navadweep Dam with my Gurudev, Madhavendapuri. When I was young, I went there with Madhavendapuri. And I remember once when we were there, we stayed in the house of one Brahmin named Jagannath Mishra huh? and his wife Sachi. I remember her very well. She was like the mother of the whole universe and she was a very good cook. I remember she cooked a mochakhanta. That means the banana flower sabji. I can never forget the taste of the banana flower sabji that was cooked by the wife of Jagannath Mishra. Hmm? And also, Jagannath Mishra had a very qualified son who took sannyas in, at a young age and his name became Shankar Aranya. Shankar Aranya. And he was traveling here and he came here to Pandapur. And it was here in Pandapur where he attained, he was a Siddhi Prapt. He attained his Siddhi. That means that he gave up his life in this world and went to the spiritual world. Hmm? But we know actually that Vishwarup the elder brother of Mahaprabhu is because Gorni Taya Krishna Balaram. Hmm? So, at that time, Mahaprabhu was in Puri, Nityanandabhu was doing Parakrama all over the world. So, that Nityanandabhu, when, Nityanandabhu, when he's in Navadweep, he's Balaram. And when Nityanandabhu is outside of Navadweep, then he's Maha Sankarsha. And Vishwarup being outside of Navadweep, his Mool Sankarshan. So when Vishwarup became, it looked as if he had passed away and attained his Siddhi perfection, but actually he became Aprakat unmanifest and the Mool Sankarshan, that is Vishwarup, entered into Nityanandabhu, Maha Sankarshan. And then when Nityanandabhu came back to, came to Navadweep and Sachimata saw him. Sachimata felt as if she were reunited again with her lost son Vishwarupu. Because he was there inside the Tinnadapur. Huh? What was that? What was that meaning? Hmm? Huh? When Nityananbu came to Navadweep in the house of, first in the house of Nandana Acharya. Oh, okay. Went back into the form. No, when he did, when he disappeared, he didn't. He didn't die. He became aprakat and entered into the form of the Nityanandapur. Yeah, in so that was in Pandapur. So when Mahaprabhu heard this, then he said to Rangapuri, "Oh, that's Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra. That's my mother and father. Vishwarup is my brother." And when because Mahaprabhu had now realized that his brother Vishwarup had. Mm, passed away, become unmanifest in Pandapur. On that day, mm, Mahaprabhu shaved his head. So that day is called Vishwarup Mahotsav. And that is the day that Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada, received sannyas from our Parama Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami. Mm? So Vishwarup Mahotsav is not the sannyas day of Vishwarup, it is not the birthday of Vishwarup. It's the day that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discovered from Rangapuri that his brother had left in that place. That is the Vishrup Mahotsav. And Mahapu shaved his head. So we also shave our heads on that day to uh, to have the Mamata uh, possess his nephew. We are Because we are in Mahapu's family. So everyone in the family, if someone passes away, you should shave. Huh? So we can see from the example 
of Ranga Puri, the example of Ishvara Puri, serving Madhavendra Puri. How, if you want to chant the Shuddha Naam, then Prabhu Kohe Vaishnava Seva Nama Sankirtan Dui Karo Shikrapa Beshi Krishna Chara One should hmm, chant and also serve pure Vaishnavas. So, Mahapu stayed for some days there in Pandapur and he would go and sing and dance in front of Vital. Vital has a very wonderful history hmm? connected with the chanting of the holy names. Oh, one thing I, I want to say in regard to chanting the holy names. Sometimes devotees, they don't play cartels very well or madanga very well or they sing out of tune or anything like this. So don't worry about that. That's not important. If you can learn to play everything nicely, very good. But the main thing is only singing from your heart. If you sing flat or sharp or not in the right raga, no harm. Just sing without any shame or shyness. Don't think that uh, I don't sing very well. So I'll just go. No, at the top of your voice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Oh, fancy ragas and alapa. Oh, oh. This is only some decoration. This is not the main thing. Decoration is not important. Huh? Srila Prabhupada, he used to say, that the chanting of Hare Krishna is ex exactly like the crying of a baby for the mother. Only I am helpless. Please save me. Hare Krishna. Huh? Once there was a very, very wealthy family. And the, in this family, the youngest son, he was not married yet. And the parents, they were quite worried about him. But finally, he mm, had fell in love with one young woman, but she was actually not from a, such a high class family, such a wealthy family, she was from a poor family. And they tried to persuade him, no, no, don't, don't marry her, because our status will go down. You have to marry equal or go up in status. But he refused, he refused, and in the end, but against the wishes of his family anyway, he married that girl. And especially his elder brother, he always, he was very stuck up, and he looked down on her. If there was any family meeting, people coming together, then he would not introduce her to anyone, he would just ignore her. Hmm? But what he didn't know is that she was very intelligent. Hmm? So after some time, she started a business. And after a few years, this business became huge. And she herself, she had made more money than the whole family. Hmm? And now, before she was dressed very, very simply, but now she was wearing all diamonds and gold and decorated very nicely. And when the family had a, uh, a, a, a meeting or a party and many guests were coming, hmm? and now she'd become famous, then that elder brother, anyone who came in, oh, oh welcome, come in, this is my sister, you do know my sister-in-law. <laughs> eh? And introducing her to everyone for his own prestige. Like this. But she was very really calm and quiet. So then when it was time mm, to take prasadam, then invite, oh my dear sister, no, come, come, sit down. Mm, take, would you like some dal, would you like some puris? And he was being very, very, very kind to her. So she said, thank you. And so then she took a puri and she put it in her ear. And then she took some dal and she put on her necklace. And then she took a japati and put it in her necklace, like this. And uh, everyone was watching and thinking, she's crazy, has, has she become crazy? That el elder brother-in-law was like, what are you doing, what are you doing? She said that, actually, you are giving so much hospitality to me, but I think that your hospitality is to my jewelry. <laughs> because before, I never had this wealth and I never had this jewelry and you never showed any hospitality to me. I am the same person. Hmm? And now you are showing hospitality, so I think you must be giving all these preparations really to my ornaments. Uh -huh. <laughs> then he became very upset, and he became ashamed, and he was humiliated. 
like this. So don't be like that uh, materialistic person, that elder brother-in-law, thinking, Oh, Harinam, you are very nice if you're singing. Mm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. If it's very beautiful, then Nam is nice. But if someone's just chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, out of tune, oh, I don't like this gift. Hmm? Then you are being like that materialistic person. You don't care about Harinam. You want to enjoy. Oh, let's hear some nice music. And clap and dance and nice music. No, Nam Prabhu is Krishna himself. Give respect to Krishna. Krishna, Nam Prabhu, not all these external things. Understand? So, Mahaprabhu, when he was in Pandarpur, he was coming and he was dancing and chanting in front of Vita. So this deity has a very beautiful history. Some many years before, hundreds of years before, there was a... Um, devotee. His name was the Janudev. Janudev. And his wife's name was Satyavati. So Janudev and Satyavati, they were very good devotees. And they had a son named Pundarik. But Pundarik was bad. Bad to the bone. <laughs> he never obeyed his parents. He was always aggressive and angry with them. And even when he grew up, and he got married, he was very mean to them. He used to shout at them, sometimes beat them. He never did any service. He never took care of his... When his mother and father, Janudev and Satyavati, began, began to grow old, he was not taking care of them at all. He was a very bad person. So then Janudev, he said to his wife, Satyavati, I cannot tolerate being here anymore. Now we are old, let's go on a parikrama. We we'll go to Kashi. Kashi is a transcendental place. If anyone passes away there, they'll definitely be liberated. Let's let's leave home and, and get out of here. So his wife agreed. So Janudev and Satyavati they decided to set off. But before they were leaving, then their son Pundarik he got wind of what was going on. He said, "Are oh, you going on pilgrimage? I also want to go on pilgrimage. I'll come with you." So then he also came with them. But he was so mean, he himself was riding on a horse and making his old parents walk. Hmm? Can you believe it? Hmm? So they were traveling for many days. Gradually, gradually, hmm, they came to one village. And there in this village, there was a rishi. His name was uh, uh, Kakut Muni. Kakut Muni had a little ashram. And they decided, we've been traveling for a long time. Let's just have a little break and... Stay with this Rishi. So they stayed there. And at night, they w went to sleep. So mother and father were sleeping. But this Pundarik could not sleep at night. Because wicked persons cannot sleep at night. Hmm? Impossible. They lie down and are worrying. What about this? What about that? Oh, he said that she said that he said that she said that. Money and thinking of material things and how to take revenge on others. Hmm? So at night he could not sleep, a whole night he was turning and turning, he was awake, so he sat up. And then when the night was almost over, he saw so many beautiful, beautiful women, shining. But they were wearing old and torn cloths, and they were going into the ashram of a Kakut Muni. What is this? All these beautiful women going in night in ashram of the Muni? So he got up and he was looking and he saw they were bringing w fresh water, they were cleaning and decorating and making everything beautiful. And when they came out from his ashram, they were dressed so beautifully. Hmm? And then they left. <coughs> so then afterwards he was thinking, but was, that, was I dreaming? Did I fall asleep in the end and have a dream? Okay, tomorrow night, I'll also stay awake and see if they come again. So then, at night, again he couldn't sleep. And when the night was almost over, again he saw those same very beautiful young women, but with old dirty cloths. 
and they were coming to the ashram and they were cleaning everything. So he couldn't contain himself any longer. So he got up and he approached them. He said, who are you? And what are you doing in the ashram of, of this Rishi at night? They said, we are doing Vaishnav Seva. We want to serve Vaishnavas. He said, who are you? One of them said, I am Ganga Devi. One said, I am Jamuna Devi. One said, I am Kaveri. I am Narmada. I am Sindhu. We are all the holy rivers. And every day, so many sinful people come. And they take bath in us and make us become contaminated. So every night we're coming to do Vaishnav Seva, we become purified. <laughs> said, so many sinful people come. And of all these sinful people, you are the most sinful. Because of the way you the, disobey and abuse your devotee parents. And then those goddesses, they disappeared. So when Pundarik heard this, he was shocked. And by their association, by their chastisement was a blessing. His heart changed. He thought, I've done wrong. Everyone should serve their parents, right? Do you serve your parents? Yes, good. What about you? Yes, good. You have to serve your parents. Whole life. You can never repay your parents. Your mother has carried you in the womb for nine months and given birth to you, this human form of life, so you can become a devotee. How can you repay her? Never. Hmm? Even a sannyasi has to bow down to, if he sees his mother, has to bow down to his mother. Yes. Huh? Mahaprabhu himself was bowing after sannyas, bowing down to Satyamata. This is a fact. So, uh -huh. he realized, I have done terrible. Mm -hmm. So I should serve my parents. And he became a great devotee of his parents. And his parents were devotees. So it was Vaishnava Seva also. So he came back and they were staying, uh, after their pilgrimage, they were staying in Pandapur. And uh, one day, he was, it was, his father had just taken a meal and he was lying down. So Pundari came and he was massaging the lotus feet of his father while he was relaxing. And because Krishna is so attracted by Vaishnav Seva, Krishna himself came there. And he came outside the house and knocked on the door. So then he said, oh, please, I'm busy. Pundik said, I'm busy. I'll be, just wait. And then he was knocking again. So then Pundrik, he got up for a moment. And then he, he saw, oh, a guest has come. So he took one block. And he came outside and he put it down. He said, here, take a seat. You can sit down here and wait. When I finish serving. But who was that person? It was Krishna. So then he went back inside to serve his father. And Krishna, he stood on that block, and like this, <laughs> waiting, waiting, happily waiting, mm -hmm. yeah. huh? not upset, happily waiting, because see, Krishna himself has said, Mad Bhakta Puja Bhyadika, the service of my devotee is greater than my service. So Krishna is very, and this is why, and that form of Krishna became Vital. So Vital is always there. And he's in this stance. Why is he like this? He's waiting. Because he's just waiting. <laughs> when will my devotee come to me? But if I have to wait because he's serving his Gurudev, no problem, I'm waiting. But I'll wait until he comes. Uh -huh. So this deity of Krishna really shows the love of Krishna for his devotees. Hmm? Bhakti, ma, mm. so Krishna said, I am not independent. I am controlled by the love of my devotee. And what to speak of my devotee? Even someone who is the devotee of my devotee is very, very dear to me. Hmm? So Vital is always standing and smiling. Hmm? And waiting for the devotees to come. Oh, when you finish your Guru Seva, then come. <laughs> so that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in great ecstasy, having darshan of that deity. Vital Nath also has a great devotee, some few hundred years before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His name was Namdev. 
Have you heard of Namdev? He's very famous, very famous devotee. So once Namdev, he came to the temple of Vital. Namdev, his name is Namdev, why? Because he's always chanting Nam. Today we are discussing the glories of the Holy Name. So he, he used to come into the temple and he was singing very ecstatic song, spontaneously from his heart. Hmm? He was singing. Oh Vital Maja 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 Prem means when the heart becomes completely melted and infused with extreme intense possessiveness. <coughs> Krishna, you are mine. Then this is called Prem. So he was singing this song himself had uh, composed to Vital. And at that time, there was one very wealthy merchant and he heard the kirtan and afterwards he approached Namdev and said your kirtan is so wonderful I have never heard such a beautiful kirtan before so I want to arrange a big mm, pandal program and I'll make a very big tent and I'll make a stage I'll, I invite so many musicians and you should come and sing and thousands of people can sing this beautiful song with you. So then Namdev was very humble, but he thought, oh, it's a nice opportunity to share the holy names with many people. So he agreed. So then some days went by, that wealthy man, he, he advertised everywhere. Oh, there will be a very fantastic concert of Kirtan, please come. And he arranged a huge tent that could panda for thousands of people. And there was a big stage and all the musicians came, the Madanga players, the um, Esraj players, the Veena players, the Tanpur players, cartel players, flute players, so many professional musicians came there and they're all tuning up their instruments. 
and thousands of people crowded into the Pandal and they were all eagerly waiting for this performance. So then, at that time, then Namdev came and he got up onto the stage and he saw the thousands of people and he closed his eyes and began to remember the lotus feet of Krishna. Huh? Because he's not singing for them. Huh? Kirtan is not for others. Kirtan is only for Krishna. He closed his eyes and remembered the lotus feet of Krishna. And he began to sing. Vital Maja 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 absorbed in seeing the beautiful pastimes of Krishna, then, you know, in Krishna Leela, the Tal and the Raga that Krishna and his associates sing in, no one in this world can even imagine. Hmm? Gopis themselves have said, Shakra Sava Paro Mesti Puroga Kavayan Anata Kandarachita Kashmalam Yayo Anis Chitataha When Mother Yashoda is in a home and she's thinking, my son is late, why has he not returned from the forest yet? And she's feeling great separation and very worried. So at that time, one gopi who was out in the forest, a messenger of Radhika, she came back. And she saw Mother Shoda said, Oh Maya, be patient, Krishna's coming soon. But just now, he, when he was returning, so many devatas, Brahma, Shiva and Indra and others, they were coming and they were showering flowers on him and worshipping him. And she, Krishna was playing on his flute. And when Sri Krishna plays on his flute, he plays in such raga and such tal that even though Lord Brahma is expert in music, you know, Brahma is brilliant. He knows all types of, all the fine details of classical music, all about the uh, swaras and srutis. And also Indra also, he's very expert. The top Gandharvas come and do musical performances for Indra in heaven. So Brahma and Lord Shiva also, he's Nataraj, you know, he knows about Tal rhythms and... But when Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma and Indra, they hear the Raga and Tal of Krishna's flute song, they listen and they think, what Raga is that? Hmm? They can identify which Tat, you know, the Ragas are in different Tats, they identify which Tat. But then Krishna will play some Vajitswara, some forbidden note, or something they've never heard before. And they, ah, what was that? <laughs> Huh? And then Kandarachita, they try to understand what rag is that, but they cannot figure it out. What tal is that? They cannot figure it out. And Brahma and Indra and Shiva, they just bow their heads in shame. Oh, alas! We thought that we were expert in music, but now we realize we are nowhere. Hearing the sound of Krishna's flute. So when Namdev began to do kirtan and he began to see the pastimes of Krishna. Then he began to sing along with Krishna's flute singing. Mm. And so sometimes his, you know, because time in the spiritual world, sometimes it becomes very long, sometimes it becomes very short. One moment can become like a thousand years or a thousand years can become like a moment. And Vita was singing. Mm. And sorry, Dante was singing. Oh, 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 oh. Hari Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari 
Sometimes slow, sometimes fast, sometimes in this rock, sometimes in that rock. And the other musicians who were trying to play along with him. <laughs> the drummer was thinking, what, is, what do I do now? And the drummer gave up. Hmm? The flute player was thinking, what rock is that? The flute player gave up. Hmm? The sitar player gave up. One by one, all the musicians, they just, they just gave up. And Namdev, he didn't know where he was. He could not see anything. Only he was seeing the pastimes of Krishna and singing the Mahamantra. And, the, and the, singing the name of uh, Vital, singing the name of Radhika very beautifully. Hmm? But from the outer perspective of all the others, I wondered, what is this? So then the, the people in the audience, they were thinking, Bunny is going to sing properly. We heard he was good, but we cannot follow anything. And one by one, the people in the audience, they were getting up and they were walking away. The tabla player put his tabla back in the bag as well. <laughs> The musicians were getting up and they walked off the stage one by one. The audience were going one by one. Even that rich man who organized the whole event, he was so ashamed, he was completely embarrassed. He also left. Huh? Pandal was empty. Huh? So, but Vital, he, was, he jumped off the stage. And he was dancing in the middle of the panda. Hmm? Vital, maja, 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 maja. Like this. And... Oh, everyone went home. There was no one. Only persons who were left were the, the men who had put up the panda. <laughs> huh? So they would think, the men who put up the panda, they thought, well, it's, everyone's gone home now, so the program's over, we should take down the panda. Hmm? But this, this guy is still singing and dancing. So they started to take down the beams and take down the roof of the panda around him. They were taking everything around him and they wrapped it up and they put it on the back of their bullock carts. So only thing left was now the carpet in the panda. So the carpet was in rolls. So when Vito was dancing over here, when Namde was dancing here, then they rolled the carpet up over there. And they're waiting for him to dance when he was dancing over here, then they rolled up the carpet over there. <laughs> So as he was dancing around, they were rolling up the carpet hmm? and they rolled it up and they put it on the back of the bullet cart and they were also leaving. Now he was alone, but he didn't know. He was just in ecstasy dancing. Hmm? But now there was no carpet and he, there was a thorn on the, and he stepped on the thorn. Oh! And when he stepped on the thorn, then his samadhi, his trance broke. And he opened his eyes and he looked around and everyone was gone. Only he could see in the distance the bullock cart with the pandalang was <laughs> driving away. He thought, oh, I have done wrong. I have done wrong. Hmm? I could have done, preached so much, but I have done wrong and now everyone has gone. Hmm? They have all left. So just he was, he was thinking sad like that. Then he felt a hand on his shoulder. He said, and I heard a voice behind him, oh, let them all go, let them, they can all go, but I won't go. I am staying with you, you sing and I'll dance. And then Namdev turned around and there was Vital. <laughs> so then he began to sing. <laughs> there was Vital. <laughs> Vital, maja, 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 maja.
son of his devotee. So, always remember, Kirtan is for Krishna's happiness, not for anyone else's happiness. Kirtan does not depend on any bragatal or anything. It is only the crying of the heart for Sri Krishna. So in Namastakam, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he is saying, Yad Brahma Sakshat Kriti Niste Api Binashma Eti Bhirana Bhogaya Upaiti Namas Purnayana Tathe Parabdha Karma Eti Viroti Veda Viroti Veda All the Vedas are roaring. That Nam is so powerful. If a person is meditating, completely absorbed in Brahman, Nirvishesh Brahman, then their karma, which will, would have come in future lives, that is Aprarabdha Karma, is all destroyed. But they still have to undergo Prarabdha Karma. They have to experience, they have to taste the karma related to this body. And that will only go away at the end of their life when they give up this body. But as soon as the holy name appears, what to speak of Aparabdha Karma, even your Parabdha Karma is destroyed. Viroti Veda, Rupa Goswami is using a very strong word. Roti means shouting. So Viroti means intensely, roaring. The Vedas are roaring. By Gyan, by Gyan, you may realize Brahman, if there's some Bhakti mixed with it. And being absorbed completely in Brahman, you can become free from futurized karma, but you still have to taste the karma related to this body. But Nami is so merciful when he just appears on the tip of your tongue, krit, not even Krishna, only krit. Mm -hmm. uh, then even the Prabhda karma, this body is completely transformed and becomes the transcendental. So then Rupa Goswami is saying, Agadamana Yashoda Nanda no Nanda Suno Kamala Nayana Gopi Chandra Brindava Nandra Pranat Karuna Krishna Vitane Kasurupe Toyi Mamarati Ruchchayavada Tam Namadeya And this is the verse that Srila Bhakti no Thakur has expanded into the song Hari Nama Tuane Kasurupa O Nam Prabhu, you have so many forms Sometimes people say, think that Nam is a form of Krishna. But Srila Bhakti no Thakur is saying, no, Krishna is a form of Nam. He is putting emphasis on Nam. Hmm? Because even though Krishna is merciful, Nam is more merciful than Krishna even. <coughs> so here he is saying, oh Nam, you have so many forms. Agadamana, you are chastised the demon, Agasura. Yashoda Nanda no Nanda Suno. You are the son of Nanda and Yashoda. You are Agadamana Yashoda Nanda no Nanda Suno Kamala Nayana. You have beautiful lotus eyes. Gopi Chandra. You are like the cooling moon who is, gives nectar for the gopis who are feeling separation from you. Brindavan Indra. You are like the, as Indra is performing his enjoyable pastimes in heaven. Your heaven is Vrindavan. You are the Indra of Vrindavan. Superior to him. Mm -hmm. Indra Dapa Vinashi, Srila Bhakti Nautakur said in this song, in the second verse, in the Surapati Dharpa Vinashi, your pastimes in Vrindavan break the pride of Indra, the king of heaven. So you, O oh Krishna, you who are very merciful to those who bow down at your lotus feet, my only prayer is that my rati, my attachment to your uh, holy names will increase day by day by day. So Srila Bhakti Thakur is saying, expanding on this verse, he's saying, Ananda Vardhan, O Nam Prabhu, you have so many forms and these forms are Ananda Vardhan, increasing the joy. And Nanda Tanai, being the son of Nanda Maharaj, you are Rasakup. Rasakup means a deep well, full of rasa. Hmm? If you are thirsty, then you can drink some water. And if there's a deep well, you cannot get to the bottom of it. You can drink from this well of rasa forever and ever. That is Nam. Nam is a deep well of rasa. So Srila Bhakti Nautaku is saying, Kutanagatana Trinavatan Shakata Banjana Gopala 
What is his name? Big Kill Portana. Yes. And? Trinavartahana. Kill Trinavarta. Shakarabanja. And he killed the card demon. Ah. Are you drowning in the Rasakoop? Hmm? There's not time to explain the whole song. So just one line. I just tell one line. Try to explain something. Give some big darshan. Just look in the direction. One line. Shila Bhakti Nautaku has sung. Yamuna Jeevano Keli Parayana Manasa Chanda Chako Namasudarasa Gayo Krishna Yasha Rakova Chanda Manamora Namasudarasa All these names of Krishna are full of nectary and rasa. Oh my dear mind, always remember them. Go on chanting these names. Huh? Listen very carefully. Hmm? Putana Ghatana Tanavatana Shakata Banjana Gopa. I have one question. Srila Bhakti Nautaku is saying these names are full of rasa. These names are all in Vatsalya rasa. Putana Ghatana. Krishna was a little baby when he killed Putana. Tanavartana. He was a little baby when he, he killed, liberated. Tanavarta and Shakat. Shakata Banja. So, how is Srila Bhakti no Thakur relishing this rasa? Who is Srila Bhakti no Thakur in Krishna Lila? Kamala Manji. Kamala Manji. Hmm? He has said himself. Bharana Tarita Basata Ravali Kamala Manjari Naha Sari Bara Varsha Bayasa Satata Swananda Sukadadha Srila Bhakti Thakur said, My complexion is like lightning and my cloth is dark blue with the twinkling stars. My name is Kamala Manjari and I am serving Radha Krishna in Swananda Sukadakunj. Hmm? My eternal age is at twelve and a half years old only. So Srila Bhakti Thakur revealed his spiritual identity. Of Kamala Manjari, and she's saying she's relishing these names of Krishna. How? Oh, hear very carefully. You know, perhaps you know that during Rasalila, when Krishna suddenly disappeared, gopis were in great shock. We left everything for Krishna, and now we were dancing with him, and suddenly, without any warning, he has disappeared. And in madness of love, their mind became so disturbed, they could not, they lost their own vivek, their own discrimination. They could not understand who has vivek and who doesn't have vivek. Discrimination. So they were asking even the trees. Chuta pravala pasanasana kovida Jambaka bilva bakalamra Hey mango tree, have you seen Krishna? Oh bilva tree, oh kovidara tree, oh kadamba tree, oh mm, jambu rose apple tree, oh little arca plant, there's even small arca plant, very useless, has no good fragrance or anything or fruit. But gopis are so humble, they're asking everyone, have you seen Krishna? He's stolen our hearts and ran away. Mm. And now we, we have no mind. We cannot do anything. We have to find him to get our minds back. So you trees, you are living on the bank of a holy river, so you are sadhus and sadhus are very much. Well, please tell us where did Krishna go? But when gopis in the madness of love spoke like this with the trees, the trees are <laughs> silent. And Gopisoda Briksha. Briksha tree is masculine. And a man can never understand the heart of a woman. So these trees don't understand us. So we should not ask them. We should ask Tulsi. She's female. Let Tulsi see. 
So then gopis came to Tulsi. Kachit Tulsi Kalyani Govinda Chana Priye Saha Tuali Kula Bibrad Dishaste Te Priyachita. Oh Tulsi, you are so auspicious. You are always very dear to the lotus feet of Krishna because Krishna always has Tulsi Manjaris on his lotus feet. And he was wearing a garland of your manjuris also. Oh Tosli, have you seen our beloved Achuta? Going his Achuta means infallible. That means Krishna's infallible, he never fails to upset us. He always does something to disturb us. So he's Achuta. Have you seen our very dear Achuta going this way, wearing a garland of your flowers, followed by swarms of bees attracted by the, your fragrance? When gopis, they begged Tulsi in this way. But Tulsi was like this. Not giving an answer. So then gopis thought, oh, she's not answering us. Why? Because she became proud that she always stays on the feet of Krishna, always on the chest of Krishna. And we're in separation. What does she know about separation? Tulsi is never separated from Krishna. She's always with him. Huh? In this way, gopis became more and more mad and they were thinking about Krishna so much hmm? that they began to imitate his pastimes. Hmm? Just like a person once, there was a person in the forest and he was sitting on the bank of a river in the forest and then suddenly he heard a noise. <coughs> and he looked and he saw a huge tiger was coming. And seeing the tiger, then that person, he just <gasps> fainted. Hmm? But the tiger is just thirsty, he wasn't hungry. So the tiger came up to the bank of the river and <coughs> took some water and went away. After some time, that person's friend came there. He was looking, where's my friend? Where did he? And he came and he saw, oh, he's, he's lying on the ground here. So he sprinkled some water on him Hmm? Oh, are you all right? Are you, what happened? What happened? And he woke up like this. And he said, what happened? And he said, he just went like this. Why? Because he was in such shock, he became, he became so absorbed. He could not speak. All he could do was just imitate what happened. So Braj Gopis, they were like that. They were so absorbed in separation from Krishna that they could not speak. They could not do anything. They just began to imitate Krishna's pastimes. One gopi was imitating Krishna killing Putana. Putana Gatana. One gopi was imitating Krishna embracing Trinavata. Trinavata Shakata Banjana Gopala. One gopi was like Krishna, was kicking his toes and he kicked Shakatasura. So you can see, Shukadeva Goswami describes in Rasalila how Braj Gopis, they're enacting all these pastimes. But still then, question comes, Braj, these are pastimes of, the related especially to Vatsali Ras, because Krishna's Balya Lila is childhood pastimes. So why are Braj Gopis Remembering and acting these pastimes, they're in Madhurya Rasa. Because those contains all Ras. Uh, no. No. It's very deep. The reason is this. What's the question? The reason is this. That there is one type of Nyai. Mm -hmm. Logic is called uh, Kaimotya Nyai. Kaimotya Nyai means the logic of Kim Uta. Kim means what and Uta means more. So Kaimotya Nyai means the logic of what more. For example, if there's a person who is very strong and you cannot express how strong he is, then you can say, oh, when he was only five years old, he could lift 200 kilos. Hmm? Now he's fully grown. We cannot say how much he can lift. But when he was five, he could lift 200 kilos. 
So if he could lift 200 kilos when he was five years old, then Kim Uta, then what to speak? Kim Uta, what more? What more can he do now? So this is a nyay. So in the same way, Braj Gopis are remembering their beautiful loving pastimes with Sri Krishna. Hmm? How did Krishna kill Putana? By the touch of his lips. So Braj Gopi is remembering how powerful are the lips of Sri Krishna, the touch of the lips of Sri Krishna. Hmm? Then they cannot express it. So one Gopi was thinking, if by Krishna's lips are so powerful, you know Putana, she had the strength of 10,000 elephants. She was so powerful. But in a moment, she was finished by the touch of Sri Krishna's lips. So if Krishna's lips were so powerful when he was only six days old, then how powerful is the effect of the kiss of Krishna? Now he is a Kishore. We cannot express, we have no words. Kimuta, Kimuta. <laughs> this is the rasa of Putanagatana. Putanagatana Trinavata. When Krishna was just a little baby, then the whirlwind demon Trimandavata came <coughs> and picked up Krishna and carried him into the sky. <coughs> Why? Because. <coughs> Excuse me. Earlier that day, Krishna was in the garden and he was looking and he said, Oh, Mother! And he was looking at the birds flying in the sky. He said, Oh, Mother, when I grow up, will I be able to fly? Mother Isho said, No, no. <laughs> when you grow up, you become bigger, you become stronger, but you won't be able to fly. Krishna was quite sad. I want to fly like them. And just as he was thinking like that, comes our center in <laughs> hmm? All the desires of Krishna are fulfilled by Yoga Maya at once. So Trinavarta came there and picked up Krishna and took him and Krishna was flying around this guy. Woo! Fantastic. Just what I wanted to do. Huh? And after he enjoyed flying around in the sky for some time, then what did Krishna do? He embraced huh? Trinavarta around the neck. Huh? But Krishna so powerful, Trinavarta came crushing down like this. So, Braja Gopis, they experience the embrace of Sri Krishna, but now in, in, in separation. How, what nectar was that embrace of Sri Krishna? Sondaur, Sondaryam, Vita Sindhu, Bangalalana, Chitta, Drisam, Plavaka, Kana, Nandi, Sanamaramya, Vachana, Kotindu, Sitangika, Saurabhyam, Rita, Samplava, Vrita, Jagat, Piyusharam, Yadara, Sago Pendra Sutta Sakashati Balat Panchindriya When Radhika from a distance sees Krishna, then, oh, the beauty of Krishna is like a tidal wave that completely submerges the mountain of her chitta. Just as the mountains cannot be covered by anything, but if a tidal wave will come at the time of the devastation, then the mountains go under the water. So Radhika's mind is very high, very pure, but <laughs> becomes submerged in the waves of Krishna's beauty. Hmm? And the touch of Krishna is more cooling and more nectar than millions of moons. So at that time, when Radhika is in separation and Krishna has left, and gopis are feeling separation from Krishna, and they remember the touch of Krishna, how powerful it is then they cannot express how powerful is the experience of being embraced by Sri Krishna. Hmm? But the power of Krishna's embrace, or oh, when he was only a little baby, his embrace finished off Trinavarta. So what to speak of us, now we are going to be finished also. Hmm? <laughs> if his embrace, embrace is so powerful when he is a baby, then what to speak of? Kim Uta, Kim Uta. Hmm? Putanagatana Trinavata Shakata Banjan Gopala Shakata Banjan. Hmm? What does it mean? Oh, when Madhya Shoda, you know, one day Krishna was a little baby and Madhya Shoda put him in the cot. Hmm? So he was there. And then after some time she went away, but one nursemaid came, Datri, 
And the nursemaid saw that Krishna was lying like this on his side. Oh, oh, oh. And she quickly ran. Oh, Mother Yashoda. Oh, Yashoda Maya. Krishna has rolled over all by himself. Hmm? It was the first time that baby Krishna managed to roll over by himself onto his side. So then Mother Yashoda told Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj said, we have to make a celebration. We have to make a big festival. So they announced to everyone, our Lala, our Kanaya, he has did it all by himself without any help from anyone. They were very proud. Uh, so then they'll have to make a very big celebration and they invited everyone in the village to come. Hmm? And they had a very uh, big uh, cart. It was actually like two stories high, like a two-story house. The cart was very big. And in the cart was also a, uh, a swing. And they put Krishna on the swing there. And there were some ribbons hanging down for the baby to play with. Hmm? But the demon, Shakatasura, came. And he entered into the cart and began to press it down. And the wheels were sinking into the ground. And he wanted to crush Krishna. But Krishna was just kicking his baby toes and like that. And he touched the cart with his toe. Hmm? And the whole thing shot up into the air turned upside down and came crashing down upside down and all the utensils went everywhere but the swing was hanging like this and so when it went upside down then it was hanging like this on the other side Krishna was okay so this is a Trinavatana but what does it mean? because yate sujata charanam buruham staneshu bita shanai priyadadi mahikhagaseshu in the kunjas of Vrindavan Braj gopis are serving Krishna. Once one mm, mm, gopi, one, she said to her Saki, this Saki was going to meet Krishna for the first time. So she said, oh Saki, listen to me, this is what you have to do. Hmm? First you should make Krishna sit down and you should fan him. Hmm? And you should cut some tambo and give him some tambo. And after giving him tumble and fanning him, then you should take his lotus feet on your heart and massage his lotus feet. And in this way you become promoted from Dasi to Naika. <laughs> from his maidservant he will accept you as his heroine. So, when Braj Gopis, they hold the lotus feet of Krishna on their hearts, then this prayam, the prayam ananda that they feel, it is indescribable. And now in separation, they're burning in separation from Sri Krishna and remembering the powerful touch of the lotus feet of Krishna. Oh, how, how nectarine is his touch, how powerful is the touch of his lotus feet. If when he was only a little baby who could just turn over, by the touch of his lotus feet, he mm, turned over the cart. Then kimuta, kimuta. Uh, we cannot express what is the... Touch of Krishna's lotus feet. Now he is a Kishwar and he became our beloved. Hmm? So Srila Bhakti Nautaka is saying, Hari Nama Tua, Anaika Surupa, Oh Nam Prabhu, you have so many forms like Puta Naghatana, Trinavatahana, hmm? Shakata Banjan, and all these forms, Nanda Tanaya, Rasa Kupa, they are like a deep, endless well full of rasa. Nama Sudha Rasa Gayo Krishna Yasa. Oh, my dear mind, never forget. Always sink in the nectar of Krishna's names. Sri Hari Nam Prabhu Ki Jai Nam Tattva Ki Jai Sri Nam Astakam Ki Jai Tipuvana Mama Karisi Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Bale Vrindavan Bihari Lala Ki Jai Bare Saniwali Ki Jai 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 Sri Radhe So we'll sing one kirtan and then I think it will be time for Mahapashana. Uh, is it on the subject? Yes. Okay, if it's on the subject then. Also, uh, I have a god brother. Prabhupada gave him Vitala Das mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, initiated Rathiatra, 75. So, 
Uh, uh, Vital. Actually, Vital is spelled in so many different ways. And it's somewhat of a Upabranx. Um, that means a, a slight corruption of the Sanskrit. So, uh, Vit, Vit means platform. And Tal means Stal. That is, who is standing on the platform that was given by Pundarik, Vithal. So it's a name of Krishna. Hmm? And, it, and it's derived from Vithal, standing on the platform. <coughs>